Hey everybody, so I thought it was finally time I make the intro video. Um, so here I want to talk a little bit about myself, what I do, and how I got here. Something you guys ask in the comments all the time, and finally getting around to it. So let's get into it. Alright, so first off, I'm JR. I'm a senior cybersecurity engineer. I work for a VAR, which is basically an integrator, also known as consultants. So I deploy different security products and security solutions for a bunch of different environments. Uh, mostly enterprise environments, but it varies from places that have like at least 2,000 users to some of my biggest clients have over 50,000 users. So fairly large scale stuff. In my day in the life of a cybersecurity engineer, videos mostly consist of firewalls. That's definitely not the only thing I do. It's just one of the more common ones. So another way to define what I do is gonna be also a network security engineer, but cybersecurity does fall under that same spectrum. I am in cybersecurity, but the blue team side, the defense side, right? If you're not familiar with that, basically it comes down to red team and blue team most of the time, where red team are the attackers, the hackers, uh, the ones trying to break into stuff. And I'm on blue team, we're the defense, we're the ones setting up all the different layers of security. Yeah, so basically whenever somebody who's not into technology asks what I do, I say basically I try and stop hackers. And some of the technologies involved in what I do is going to be of course next gen firewalls. And a couple of things fall under that like uh, VPN, site to site VPN, remote access VPN, intrusion prevention or intrusion detection systems, endpoint security, mobile device management, uh, email security, DNS security, I've run some phishing campaigns, data loss prevention as well, CASBs. Look at my notes here because there's so many. I actually to keep a list of it. Network access control, NACs, uh, identity services like ICE, multi-factor authentication, I do security posturing, and if the situation requires, I also do incident response. So I have done incident response on several ransomware incidents uh, with some of my clients. Honestly, even though it's really unfortunate when it happens, it's one of my favorite things to do. My favorite way of describing it is the closest I get to being Batman because I'm like one-on-one -on -one fighting with the hackers at that point, right? <laughs> so um, how did I get here? Well, I was originally a college dropout. I dropped out of college at 21, worked in retail for almost 10 years. And at one point, thanks to my now wife, I ended up going back to school for a computer maintenance certificate. I, I had always been building computers since I was a kid. And I just wanted a some kind of certificate or paper that says I know how to do it so I can get a job at help desk somewhere. That quickly spiraled because when I took my first networking class, that was the first class that I went into and I was like, this is all new to me. I mean, I knew a little bit, but not to the extent that it was happening. I ended up changing my degree to being a network specialist. And from there, that same thing happened again when I took a security class. I always thought of cybersecurity being that thing, well, what everybody thinks it is, red team stuff, hacking stuff. The stuff that I thought wasn't gonna be feasible for me to learn, especially so late in the game. When I took a cybersecurity class, same thing happened. I realized, hey, this is feasible. I can learn this, I'm enjoying this. The program I was in didn't have that big of a difference between the classes I need for networking and for cybersecurity. And it made sense to me, if I'm gonna be defending the network, I should know how it works. So I'm gonna just do both programs and that's exactly what I did. I earned two associates, one in network specialist, one in cybersecurity specialist. But anyway, from there, I made sure I, I worked on my soft skills a lot, which I got to working in retail for so long, right? And I got to know my professors. All of them came from the industry. All of my professors at one point worked for the companies that I would have wanted to work for. So at one point, I remember in the middle of exam, uh, one of my professors pulls me up uh, outside of the class and here I'm thinking someone copied off me or I'm in trouble or something, right? And she says, there's this one company here that they're opening up an internship position. They asked for my recommendations for it. And I'm just gonna recommend you and one other person. Just wanna let you know if you're interested and I I was hesitant because it's it's an internship. At this point, I was already 26, maybe 27. I had three kids, one was a, was a newborn and we had another one on the way. Um, yeah, <laughs> so it was a very scary thing to like, well, should I take an internship? Should I leave my job that I've been at for five years while I have a newborn and another baby on the way and a family to support? But I asked her, well, what do you think of this company? And she said, well, anybody that's doing this program at this school, this is the place that would want to be at. She was definitely not wrong. It was one of the best experiences of my life. So I did the internship. Thankfully, it was paid. It wasn't a huge pay deduction from where I was at, so it was still feasible for me to do, but it was extremely hard. At this point, I was taking, I was doing two associate degree programs at the same time. I had a toddler and a newborn doing the internship. And on top of that, the main way I could guarantee I would get the job at this company after the internship would be to get certified. This company is a huge Cisco partner. So a CCNA there means a lot. Um, so in my six month internship, that was one of the main things I worked on. So again, went to school, supported my family and had newborns was doing the internship full time. And on top of that was also studying for the CCNA. It was tough to do the CCNA too, as an intern, it wasn't covered. And it's three, I believe $350 at the time, uh, which was a big deal for us at the time. And unfortunately on my first attempt, I barely did not pass, which hit me really hard. If there's anything I want to say to anybody out there trying to get certified for any field, failure is okay. We all fail exams. If they were easy, they wouldn't be worth getting. <laughs> Thankfully I had 
so many great mentors and other colleagues at this company that, that really helped out and supported me and just like, hey, just get back at it. We're gonna keep studying. They gave me some good strategies on how to figure out what to focus on afterward. So that's exactly what I did. And sure enough, a month later, did my second attempt. And this time, knocked out of the park. I was ridiculously nervous because I was not gonna be in any way, shape or form to afford a third attempt. But I did it and I got hired as a lead technician. In, in this space, a technician does layer one stuff. When we were racking and stacking, uh, racking in appliances, putting up access points, stuff like that, really hands-on stuff. But at the same time, I was learning a lot about the topology, uh, any campus architecture and working side by side their network engineers. I was constantly making noise at this company, always saying about that I wanna get in cybersecurity. That's what I'm studying for, that's my passion. and would sometimes here and there talk about some ways that I would want to make some security changes, whether it's on the networking side or switching side, just stuff that I saw that I think we could do better. So anytime we had some kind of company get together with uh, some of the C-level people, sat down, had drinks with them, talked to them and let them know. It's like, yeah, I want to get in cybersecurity. I want to go for this cert. And there's this and this uh, ideas that I want to implement into how we do things. So again, just made it known what my ambitions were and that paid off. From there, at one point, the cybersecurity practice manager for this company was in town and I sat down to meet him. When he came into to our office and started just talking, uh, we were talking about my goals and what I want to do. And little did I know at the end of that, he was like, oh, okay, well, well I'm going to be opening up a cybersecurity engineer position for your office and I want you to be that engineer. So let's talk about how we're gonna get there. What I thought was just a conversation ended up being an interview. The process ended up being I would do a year of pre-sales, uh, a year of network engineering, and then I can join the security team, and that's where I am now. Two years after that, got promoted to a senior engineer, and that's where I'm at right now. I've gotten several other certifications since then. At the moment, I have two CCNAs, one in cyber ops, one in route switch. Uh, I have an NSC4, um, partway through the NSC6. We will be taking my NSC7 next month and a whole bunch of other smaller certs from various vendors that we have to take all the time. Certifications are heavily, heavily incentivized at the company I'm at, so I'm constantly getting new ones. Uh, in fact, at one point, one of the biggest problems was that I could not focus on which one to study on. But yeah, those are the ones that I'm working on right now. As soon as I'm finished with NSC 6 and 7, next goal is CCMP security. So that's a little bit about myself. Let me know if you have any questions on anything I talked about today. I would love to have more conversations with everybody here, and I look forward to making more YouTube exclusive content. Uh, which, by the way, everything I've posted so far has been from my TikTok. Uh, check out my TikTok. Uh, it's the same handle, at SecEngineer. I'll put a link in the description. But that's where I'll post that stuff first, and I post uh, almost daily over there. But I'll be posting more YouTube exclusive stuff here uh, from here on out, and I really hope you enjoy. So uh, I guess don't forget to... God, I can't believe I'm saying it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, it sounds insane. <laughs> so yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, hope that helps. Thanks.